Welcome. I'm going to discuss today a hum neutralization neutralizer circuit for tube amplifiers. I'm going to use and show you that by using a little bit of wire and one little resistor, you can, in your tube amp, eliminate the chronic hum, which has been the bane of existence to all tube amp builders since decades ago. Now then, I would suggest first though that you have taken the steps necessary to resolve the hiss in the tube amp first because sometimes the electrostatic coupling between the components in the first stage create a hum. It's a little bit different but if you don't have an oscilloscope and you're listening for a hum and you use this circuit and you still have hum it could be there's still hum in the first preamp, again, based on electrostatic coupling, which is a little bit different, but still creates a hum. So, the power supply on this project is very clean, but it still had a classic hum, just like any other commercial, boutique, do-it-yourselfer, it's still there. Hum has been around since before 1932. It's still around. Uh, it's not so much a problem in stereo tube amps because they are generally using feedback circuits which eliminate very spurious signals, distortion, hum in multiple stages throughout their circuit. So they're used to putting some of these techniques to work as a standard practice. So the first thing is the reason their tube amps sound much cleaner than our tube amps is because they are using these neutralization circuits that guitar amplifiers don't typically use. So I can also eliminate hum for you if your amp is still using carbon composition resistors. Carbon composition resistors add to hiss because of Johnson and Flicker noise but they don't really contribute to hum. Neither do caps, uh, inductors, chokes, tubes, etc. Minor issues, and if they were so simple as to fix a hum with changing any of those things out, I wouldn't make this video. There would be no postings on the internet forums anywhere because it's so easy to fix. It's not that easy. Now then, there's a couple ways of getting rid of an unwanted signal. You can filter it. Power supply is filtered and is very clean in this case. You can put a gate in. Now a gate masks the noise. It, it, there's a threshold set that it will cut the signal until you start playing and once you start playing the hum's back but you're playing at such a la much louder volume than the hit, a hum or hiss that you don't hear the hum or hiss. It's when you're not playing that we don't want to hear the hum in this case. So what, what do you do? Well we put a noise cancellation circuit in, a hum neutralizer circuit in and basically you take a signal, you put it 180 degrees out of phase it cancels out, there's no hum, there's no distortion, there's no spurious signals, and that's great, especially since we're dealing with tube amps, because from the gate, from the grid to the plate, the signal's inverted 180 degrees. So we're going to capitalize on that built-in feature to get rid of hum. Now then, I also have come up with 10 steps to follow here. Now you may have an oscilloscope, it'd be better that you do. So there would be the same if you weren't with, didn't have an oscilloscope, but I'm going to explain it in case you actually have an oscilloscope. You need to be able to see what you're up against to make sure what kind of hum is it, what kind of signal does it look like, so I can explain to you why some fixes to hum don't work. So first, unplug your guitar, your mic or anything else connected to input jack, turn the volume all the way down, and then let your amp warm up. Then turn up the volume until you can hear the hum. The reason with the volume down first is that first jack where you plug your guitar in should be a shorting jack. It's important that the signal is shorted to the shield before turning the amp on. If it's full volume and it's not shorting jack, it's going to be louder than you want. So you run the risk of doing some damage maybe to your speakers. Now then, once the volume's turned up and the amp's warmed up, you're hearing the hum. If you turn the power supply off, if the hum goes away, then it's because most probably it is due to the power supply system somewhere. That's a good sign. It also could be something else. 
So, next step, be sure to pull the tremolo tube out or the vibrato section. The reason you want to pull those out is that, as you see in the diagram on the left, bottom left side of the screen, the tremolo circuit, the reason it works is we're causing a self-oscillation, an auto oscillation. It produces a sine wave which is less than 10 hertz, between 3 and 10 hertz, and we don't hear it because it's less than 10 hertz. But it will be present on the B plus supply to the rest of the amp. And when you're using an oscilloscope to detect a waveform, you're going to see it first. And it's so large relative to the hum signal that while you see the trace of the tremolo, and you can verify that it is the tremolo sine wave because it's just the speed on a tremolo sine wave, you'll, you'll adjust the uh, the frequency. You can see that on, a tr on the oscilloscope screen. But the trace is so wide that the hum might make that trace look fuzzy, but you won't see the actual trace to the hum. So get rid of the tr tremolo tube first. Once it is removed, we, we want to look at the very first grid of the input to the amp and you should see a waveform there and it's going to be somewhat fuzzy it might be like 0.1 millivolts it's tiny it's a waveform you're looking at that now that we want to verify that it's 120 hertz and that's going to be 8 milliseconds remember we're dealing with a full bridge rectifier and so both cycles are, are used the 60, one si the 60 cycle becomes 120 cycle. So we're looking for a 120 cycle hum. This is the screenshot. As I took it, the oscilloscope and probed the grid into the power tube. So the hum's been multiplied a lot. And on the left, what you're seeing is it is indeed 80 mil, 8 milliseconds or 120 hertz. And look at the first waveform. The first two waveforms are symmetrical, different peaks. Now then, if, if that were the extent of the hum, you could put a hum balance pot in. And what a hum balance pot does for you on the filament heater supply is that it may be ranging from six, positive 6.4 volts to minus 6.2 volts and the hum balance pot then shifts that a little bit so it's plus 6.3 to minus 6.3 and then the hum goes away it's in balance then now then the hum is heard also through the transformer windings because when the voltage is in balanced it vibrates the windings of uh, the transformer and that creates a mechanical hum. The mechanical hum is transferred through the chassis to the power tube. The power tube shakes and when the power tube shakes you will hear it through the speaker. Now there's a couple ways of getting around that. You can put a dampener on the power tube. You can put the power tube in a shock mount. You can put the transformers on a shock mount. And that should resolve that problem. Easy fix. Normally that's not the problem. But look at the third wave into this developing wave pattern. It is not symmetrical. It's not asymmetrical. It is just, I don't know a good technical term, but let's call it wumpy looking. It's a, it's a sine wave, but it's just not characteristically perfect. And so the, what we have, the hum is a complex signal now. It's not just 120 hertz. If you look at all three cycles and they repeat again in the second set, two nice wave sets followed by this third wompy one. But when you look at all three of them together, what you have is a composite 40 hertz impressed upon the 120 hertz and the combination of that is somewhere in the 100 to 150 hertz range. Now, unless you have a frequency counter, you're not going to exactly see it and we really don't care. You have a composite uh, hum problem. It's somewhere again between 100 and 150 hertz. But we can, I can get rid of that with this with this neutralizer circuit. Now that I, I've been using, make sure I covered all this. And that got, got to have notes. Just make sure I'm on track here. So what's causing that wumpy looking wave? Well, it's, it's tied to the current inrush of the rectifier. Whether it's solid state or whether it's the tube rectifier, it does not matter. The capacitor has to recharge and when it recharges every cycle or every couple cycles it has more current inrush. 
because you're playing, you're drawing current, and it has to be replaced with the filter capacitor upstage in the power supply. That inrush then causes sag to the system. Not a lot. Look at this, this case. We're not going to talk in bolts of sag here. We're talking going from maybe 10 uh, millivolts peak to peak to maybe somewhere between 8 and 5 millivolts peak to peak. It's not a lot, but it's enough to cause hum in the power supply that we want to get rid of. So, replacing re re resistors and capacitors and inductors and chokes and tubes it's a lot of money and it won't resolve the problem. So, we're going to take care of that here. And remember, this 10 millivolts, it, it, we'll go back to power supply. Well, shouldn't have a better power supply. Let me make one more point known to you. The power supply is, is supplying 385 volts DC. The hum is 10 millivolts peak to peak. Basically, we're talking 0.0018% deviation in the B+. It's a clean power supply, but we still have hum that we want to get rid of. So, step 8. Finish checking the grids and the cathodes throughout the entire circuit, from the front to the back. From the front, you got the preamp, the amp, the uh, phase inverter, the push-pull, Maybe in your amp, and my amp is a little simple, simpler because I'm, I just have a pre a amp, a preamp, pre an amp, and, a, and the power tube is a single end amp. The reason you want to check the grids and cathodes is to be sure that there's no spurious oscillations, no parasitic oscillations, and there's not some RC component creating a frequency contributing to the hum. Now then, if the waveform should get bigger because it keeps getting amplified from the preamp to the power tube. It should look the same, but it just gets larger in voltage. But if it changes, it could be that in, in power tubes, especially pentode, single-ended amplifiers sometimes develop an oscillation on the grid. In which case, it's easy to take care of that. You put a grid stopper on the grid of the pentode, and that should clear those sort of things up. But that's the reason we check this. I just want to make sure that you understand that. So, going back to Radio Designer's Handbook, 1,500 pages of just great stuff to read and how to and fix things. So, this hum problem has been around since before 1932. It was easy to fix. We wouldn't ha have to make this video and explain things with one another. So, in the first edition, 1934, they had circuits to eliminate hum. Stereo amplifiers take advantage of all these in every single stage, and they just really don't have issues like guitar amps do, which are built using as few components as possible because you can. So, in Section 5, Chapter 2, Hum Neutralizing, page 1200. Go look it up, and this is what you see. So, on the figure on the left, what they did was took the errant signal, the distortion, the uh, hum, or whatever it is they want to get rid of, they take it off the plate through an RC circuit and they feed it into the grid of the pentode. You can also do this with a triode or a tetrode, not a triode, tetrode. And it will it'll eliminate, eliminate hum because the plate and the uh, screen are 180 degrees out of phase. Problem solved. Or they suggested taking the a sample off the plate of the preceding stage and feeding it to the screen of the Next stage, again, it's 180 degrees out of phase, problem solved. And I thought, all right, good idea, but I really don't want to be putting any more circuitry on a 385 volts DC than I have to. And if I was suggesting a, a remedy for you to use, I'd rather you be on the safe side, playing with a couple volts on the grid or a couple volts on the cathode, and stay away from, from the B+. Plus. So... I came up with this idea. Same concept, I'm just using the cathode and the grid to resolve the problem. So first things first, what I did was looking at the filament heater. So on my amp, I have a center capped 6.3 volt heater supply. So I took that ground, took it off a of ground and fed it into the bias point of the pentode. 
that elevates the ground for the filament up to whatever the voltage is for the cathode of the pentode. In this case, it's 14 volts. Now, then, as far as the filament heater is concerned, it, it never sees that. It's still seeing 6.3 volts. Now, then, it doesn't know that it's superimposed upon 14 volts as shown on the right-hand side of this diagram. It doesn't know. Their circuits aren't aware, right? Okay, so it, it's impressed upon 14 volts. That's great. The reason this is done, though, is that we want to uh, bring in the hump purposely, intentionally bring the hum into the cathode of the pentode so that we have uh, the hum captured that we can then process it. It has to, the voltage has to be plus or minus, but it can't be going below, it can't be going, uh, can't be going negative, it can't be grounding out. So we don't want it to ground out, but we want to bring it into the, to the cathode. So that's what the reason I elevated the uh, gr ground. So if you don't have uh, an, a center tapped uh, filament supply, you can artificially create one by simply putting two resistors in and creating an artificial center tap by putting in generally what's recommended is 100 ohms either side and then you can take that into the circuit I just showed and, and elevate it. Now then, here's where the magic comes into. We're going to take a resistor. I'm going to refer to these resistors R hum. R1 is the bias resistor of the preceding stage. R2 is the bias resistor of the power tube. And I'm going to connect the cathode of the power tube to the preceding stage using a resistor called R hum. Now then, when you put 15K in, it will, it should immediately, you should be able to immediately tell that there's between a 3 and 6 dB improvement in the hum. It's 6 3 to 6 dB less in volume. If you put a 10K in there, it should drop it down between 10 and 15K. There's a 10 to 15, I'm sorry, dB improvement on the hum. You could stop there and go, unless I put my ear right up against the speaker, I'm not going to hear the hum. But you could stop there, but the whole purpose of this noise cancellation circuit is to get rid of the hum. So I picked a 4.7K resistor. Nothing magic about that. I just didn't have a 5K. All right. So I took a 4.7 in there and it dropped it well below 35 to 40 dB improvement. It's not where I can hear it. Even if I put my, my ear up against the speaker, you will not hear it. Now then, you look at that and you go, oh my, we've just changed the bias on both those tubes. All is lost. Give up hope. Abandon ship. Well, that's not the case. Remember, current flows through the path of least resistance. I put a 15K between R2 and R1, but R2 is somewhere between 150 to 400 ohms. There's no current that's really going to be flowing through our hum that's going to affect the power stage. It's okay. But it will raise the voltage on R1. Now, R2 started at 14 volts on this circuit, and it ended up with R hum inserted. It is still 14 volts DC. Now then, across R hum, it elevated R1 from 2 volts to 4 volts. And you would think, naturally, that that's going to change, rightly so, the bias point of the preceding stage, and that just changes a lot. Well, it doesn't change V1 enough because V1 plate voltage is 285 volts. I added 2 volts to the bias. Nothing's changed. When I monitored this before, I had 90 dB with hum at threshold of hearing. It's about minus 35 dB. The dB reading at the amp afterwards is 90 dB, no hum. So it's minor. So that's what I did to eliminate hum in this tube amp circuit by giving some uh, feedback from the cathode before to the cathode uh, to the preceding stage, which goes to this grid, which goes to the plate, which inverts it, which feeds it to the grid of the power tube, which feeds it to the plate, cancels out, you get nothing out the backside, hum's completed, your amp's clean, uh, happy listening, I hope this works for you, thanks for watching.